Jill, do you want to know? Thank you. The other thing I want to touch base with just before we start the meeting is uh, I would like to introduce our new city manager of planning and inspection, Steve Sokolowski. I hope I pronounced that right. Hey, all right. Prior to coming to Sheboygan, Steve was a city planner in Oregon for five and a half years. Steve is originally from South Milwaukee, and Steve is married and has two children. Steve, if you'd like to step up to the microphone and... Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to say to the council this evening that I appreciate the opportunity. I look forward to working with the council as well as the rest of the staff and as well as the community of the city of Sheboygan. And my family and I look to become active members of the community as well. So I appreciate the opportunity. I look forward to working with you all. Thank you and welcome aboard. Thank you. Okay, Pat said she's ready to go. So with that, we'll start our regular, ninth regular meeting of Common Council. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Doyle? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Here. D. Akron? T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Here. Wangaman, Here. Warner, Here. Wenninger, 15 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that we approve the minutes of the previous council so entered as re on the record. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the previous council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pat, pledge? Uh, Paulette. Paulette, would you lead us in a pledge this evening? We have one hearing this evening, and that's the proposed issuance of not to exceed $4 million City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin Variable Rate Demand Industrial Development Bond Series 2002 for Subco Foods of Wisconsin, Inc. Incorporated Project in Carolyn's Kitchen of Wisconsin, LLC. Any interested persons wishing to be heard on the hearing? If you have any questions, Tom's here. Tom, would you like to address the council, please? Uh, good evening. My name is Tom Griggs. I'm an attorney with Godfrey and Kahn in Milwaukee, serving as bond counsel on this industrial revenue bond uh, transaction. And uh, if there are any questions, I'd be pleased to respond. Anyone? Thank you, that's easy. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I need a motion that the hearing be closed. I move that the hearings be closed. Second. Move to second that the hearings be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Resignation, Steve. Uh, the first is a letter dated July 25 to the mayor. I hereby resign my position of alderman in the first district of the city of Sheboygan, sincerely, Anthony Bonet. That being to be accepted and placed on file. And a letter dated July 31st, Mayor Schramm. Due to a work conflict, I'm unable to serve on the Capital Improvements Commission. Please accept my resignation, sincerely, Roseanne Butine. Can be accepted and placed on file. Appointments. Yeah, appointments. Uh, this is dated August 5th from the mayor. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. James Groff to be considered for appointment to the Capital Improvements Commission to fill the unexpired term of Roseanne Butine, whose term expires 4-30-03. Signed by the mayor. Terry, I need a suspension. Your Honor, I would move to suspend. 
moved to the second for a suspension. Reason, Reason being, we we're starting capital improvements Wednesday. Right. Thank you. If, is there any objection to suspension? Then, Your Honor, I move that the appointment be accepted. Moved and seconded. Appointment be accepted under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. That's okay. Pat, public forum. Mike Malmberg. As many of us read about Juan Perez versus Partnership versus Community Development, I believe that it's not against, it's not just Juan Perez we're looking at, we should be looking at our Constitution the freedom of speech. Can I believe Juan Perez was acting within the government and therefore we should, we should not be afraid to speak our minds and represent the will of the people. Can I feel that nowadays the few wants us to be politically correct, but I believe in, I've been taught to believe in the Constitution and as the supreme law of the land. And if Ron Perez wants to speak out, he should be allowed to. And because this is a free country, and then we believe in. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mike. Jeff Herman. Thank you, Your Honor, members of the council. Um, for those of you that don't know me, Jeff Herman, President, Firefighters Local 483. And yes, I'm here to talk to you about the ambulance. But <coughs> breathe easy, I don't have another proposal for you or any changes to the current ones that you have. Uh, I'm here because you and many other people have asked what's wrong with the system and what needs fixing. Uh, to this point, we have tried to take the high road and keep those conversations within committee meetings. Um, we've chosen not to respond to inaccurate news reports and uh, radio talk shows uh, because we felt that those conversations needed to be done in committee meetings. But evidently, um, the information is not getting out of the committee to the entire alderman body. Uh, so I've been asked to come here and talk to you about some of those issues. Uh, Orange Cross stood in front of you uh, when they gave their proposal and said that their average response time is about three and a half minutes. What they didn't tell you is in that 24 month period where they got those figures, they used what is, uh, are called zero response times, 286 of those calls they used as zero response times. And as we go through the, through the um, records, those almost nearly all those times can be proven not to be zero response times. The reason they're documented as zeros is because Orange Cross either uh, neglected to call on scene or dispatch neglected to document the on scene time. So by going through the reports, uh, we can prove that those are not zero response times. And if you figure in all those additional times, uh, that is going to bump up their average response time quite a bit. Um, Alderman Vanderwill had the opportunity to ride along on a couple of our calls a week or so ago. Uh, he did witness one of those calls uh, where the fire department was there first. And the report did come in as a zero response time for Orange Cross. So he did witness that. Um, Orange Cross also told you that they meet their contract 100% of the time. Uh, their contract calls for them to be en route on every call within two minutes. Those same uh, time reports can prove that they are not being en route within two minutes on every call. Uh, Orange Cross is required to file a report every time they have a response time over eight minutes. Those reports are kept in Stacy Carby's office. Um, I've gone through them. It's a stack quite high. 
Uh, the most common reason given by Jerry Isabel to why they have a response time of over eight minutes was that the city's clock was wrong and they went by the orange cross clock and then they then had a five minute or a six minute response time. Yet a week or so ago in the strategic fiscal planning committee meeting, Mr. Isabel told that committee that uh, they use the city's clock for their response times. So one of those statements uh, is not true. Uh, Dr. Martins, their uh, medical director, told you that the firefighters do, are not on scene uh, soon enough before Orange Cross arrives to do any skills. Um, our same reports can show that the firefighters are getting there on scene quite a bit ahead of Orange Cross. Um, they're performing CPR, getting vital signs, administering oxygen, using our defibrillator, um, all before Orange Cross arrives on many occasions. Now, if you look at the plan that Orange Cross has filed with the state for their protocols for their calls, they are not meeting them on, on all their calls. Um, on all their protocols, it calls for an on-scene time of 20 minutes or less. For a stroke, it's 10 minutes or less. Uh, the one month that I went through, uh, 116 out of 164 calls, they were on scene 20 minutes or longer. Orange Cross has changed its proposal weekly and they've still failed um, to meet the conditions that you've asked them to meet. Uh, we have not changed our proposal, the fire departments, and when you think about it, it's not a fire department proposal, it's your proposal. We work for you. Whatever you want to see in an ambulance uh, system, you have to tell us and we'll do it for you. Uh, in closing, I truly believe that the long-term dedicated employees of the fire, Sheboygan Fire Department can provide you with a far superior ambulance service. Um, if that's not reason enough to consider it, um, think about it this way. I work for a company. The company is the city of Sheboygan. You people run this company. And I, like every other hardworking person, next year I would like a raise. You have to ask yourself, do you honestly believe that I would bring something to my company that I thought was going to lose money for my company. That's how firmly I believe that the ambulance business is a money-making proposition for the city. Currently, it's costing the Sheboygan taxpayers over $100,000 a year for the fire department to act as first responders. The city needs to look at ways to recoup that. Uh, I will stick around after the meeting. I have a lot of documents where I can prove uh, the response times are not zeros. For anybody that would like to see them, I'd be happy to show them to you. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you, Jeff. That's all. Uh, <clears throat> this evening, we have Sergeant Tarkowski with us. And Tim, you want to fill us in on what's going to happen this Saturday, please? We're going to vary from the agenda a little bit. Did I say anything? No. That's a good thing. Uh, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> Council, thank you very much for the few moments to, uh, to address you. Uh, Last September 11th, when our nation was attacked by terrorists, um, our community came together, and on Sunday, September 16th, we raised over $142,000 within the county to send out to emergency service workers in New York City um, as direct relief to their, to their families for Christmas and so forth. This is a picture of our retired officer, Rick Kalafka, uh, delivering a, an envelope full of checks to uh, Lieutenant Mark Winslow of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. The Port Authority's headquarters was in the World Trade Center. They lost 37 police officers in that attack. This Saturday at 6.30 p.m., Mark, uh, uh, I should say, our, our Sheboygan Police Benevolent Association is sponsoring a visit to our community by Mark. Mark is uh, going to show our community his PowerPoint presentation. A PowerPoint is a modern-day slideshow. These are yet to be seen by public photographs his commentary on what happened. Um, Mark has been working the 12-hour days every day since September 11th until May 30th of this year and has great insight into what happened there and has a lot to offer to our community. He's doing this as a thank you to us for this, not only for, for the donations from our community, but when we went out and fried brats and, and fed relief workers out at Ground Zero and we formed kind of a special bond with Lieutenant Winslow and this is his way of saying thank you. 
Uh, as a result, we are going to have this presentation open to the public free of charge, sponsored by our Benevolent Association at the Sheboygan Armory, 6.30 p.m. this Saturday. Uh, tonight we just got some publicity on Channel 4 News. Uh, did a short interview today. I've received responses from over 50 police departments who are sending officers to view this. We're hoping to pack the armory to a standing room only uh, show by Lieutenant Winslow. I'd like the community to come out and uh, support this show also. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. There's a document on agenda tonight, 944, and it's supposed to go to Public Works, but just requesting the use of the armory for this weekend. Uh, Alderman Van Akron, if we could act on that rather than being referred to Public Works. In our honor, I would move that we accept the communication from Tim Tarkowski and waive the fees for the armory for this weekend. Second. Moved and seconded that we waive the fees for the armory for this weekend and act on the document. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. One other gentleman who would like to say a few words before we get into the consent agenda, Mike. Uh, Mike Hutz, would like to speak on one of the issues. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in your agenda packet today, I'll be referring to document number 9-11. It's on the consent, consent agenda. Just wanted to make a couple of comments uh, regarding it. Uh, Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company recently completed an extensive safety audit of our wastewater treatment plant and public works department. They followed uh, a thorough 18 point area inspection process which the State Department of Commerce follows. Uh, they've done this with all 38 of their members and many other cities who are members of Civ CIVMIC have struggled to comply with, uh, with, with what the findings of CIVMIC were. If you read the third and fourth paragraph of the letter I attached, you'll see how well Sheboygan did and how complimentary CIVMIC is of our program. Now, some of you might be thinking, big deal. What does that equate to in savings and tax dollars? Well, uh, I can give you a couple figures. In 1987 was the last year that the city of Sheboygan uh, insured its workers' compensation coverage. At that time, we paid roughly $278,000 in premiums and incurred 130 claims. Now, 14 years later, last year in 2001, despite having higher wages and substantially higher medical costs, as you all know, our total workers' comp cost amounted to roughly $150,000, half of what it was 14 years ago, for 64 claims, which again is about half the claims we incurred 14 years ago. Clearly, I think you can see our employees are working safer and the savings are apparent. I think this emphasis upon safety has also had a positive impact upon our liability exposure, which we also self-insured beginning back in the late 1980s. With employees being more aware of their own safety, they're also more aware of hazards that are out there in the community, and they're reporting them in time for us to fix them before any problems can occur. I think this awareness combined with our self-insured program and a concentrated effort to reduce our liability exposure uh, has led to, believe it or not, millions of dollars in liability premium savings since the city self-insured 14 years ago. Uh, I'd like to make a couple compliment, compliment a couple people, if I may. First of all, DPW and wastewater treatment management staff for their assistance in the review process, and union representatives Tom Pitch and Mike Dietz from DPW, and Chris August from the wastewater treatment plant, who assisted in the review process and were questioned by CIVMIC people regarding their knowledge of the city safety standards. A good safety program is only good as a knowledge that our employees retain, and these three individuals obviously had an excellent grasp of our safety program. Uh, lastly, but most important, I'd like to single out two guys who pretty much work in anonymity, uh, Frank Calco and Bob Steeb. Uh, they work with safe, safe work practices on a daily basis and are responsible for the development, implementation, and, and training associated with our safety program. 
They work with every department in the city operation and truly are to be congratulated for their efforts, which have played an integral part in the success of our programs. I applaud their commitment. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for the time. Thank you, Mike. Alderman Van Akron, uh, as long as Tom's here, could you pull 946 ahead, please? Yeah, um, I had notes to do that. I'd like to uh, pull ahead 946, please. It's a resolution authorizing the city of Sheboygan, uh, Wisconsin, variable rate demand industrial revenue bonds series 2000s, thousand for the Subco Food Wisconsin Inc. project. And I would move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Move and second a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Chels. Thank you, Your Honor. I probably should have asked this question at, at, during the hearing, but uh, maybe the gentleman could uh, touch on what this $4 million is going to be used for uh, when uh, this plant was built out there with Enzo Pack at that time yet. Uh, this place has changed hands a couple of times, and it's nice to see every industry uh, grow and expand. And uh, I know there was a time when they were struggling out there, and I, I think they're doing all right now, and uh, I hope they are. And, and you know, I certainly wish them all kinds of success, but maybe you could just touch on what this $4 million is going to be used for and, and how the plant is doing. And this Carolyn's Kitchen, is that also a part of them, or is that something else? Let's have Tom, Tom, please. Thank you. Um, uh, to address the last question first, Carolyn's Kitchen, that's a related entity to Subco Foods. It's a limited liability company uh, that was set up for this particular transaction. Carolyn's Kitchen uh, actually owns the real estate in the building, and Subco Foods uh, will own the equipment in the building. So they're related by common ownership. Uh, the $4 million will be used for the acquisition uh, cost of the building and the equipment, as well as um, rehab, uh, rehabilitation expenditures on both the building and the equipment over the next two years. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Would you call the roll, please? D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. D. Van Akron. Aye. T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron, if you would do one more favor, please. Last page from Committee on Finance, called to the clerk's desk. Uh, Tom Schaefer's here with us, so he can get back to Mequon this evening. Could we do that? <coughs> That's for the TIF district, the ER TIF district. Your Honor, I believe it's on, on our agenda 2639. Correct. At the at, under the, the on the amended agenda that everybody received the night. Uh, this committee report way back from uh, back early in March, I believe, uh, approving written proposal for remediation environmental po pollution through the use of an environmental remediation tax increment. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Okay, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of things. Documents. That's fine. On Pat's notes here, we have to do 957 first, suspend, and then a resolution be passed. I was told we have to put the funds in place first, so that's the transfer resolution, which is 957. I guess it would be nice to have money to before we spend it, huh? Right. <laughs> so. Well, then I would move on 957, the resolution transferring the funds for the Northgate environmental that we would suspend the rules. There you go. For Are there any objection to suspension? I didn't hear a second. Proceed. Hearing no objections, I would move that we the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? <clears throat> Eberg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Stefan, D. Van Akron, Aye. T. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carry. Okay, no. carry. No, wait. No. Now, Your Honor, I would move on resolution 2639 that that resolution 
or document number 2639 that the resolution be put upon its passage for creating the environmental that's easy for me to say uh, redi remediation remediation tax increment. tax increment okay it's moved and seconded that the document 2639 along with is that 2821 no it's just that the rest 271 okay. that's that'll be the, okay we'll do those later a uh, hundred discussion all of my parts your honor I need to be before we do this, I need to make a couple. The city attorney has given me some uh, language okay. that needs to be changed. Okay. Is that what you were going to do? I'm going to correct what I'm going to question, so go ahead. Should I do that first? Sure. Okay. Under the uh, resolution in paragraph, on the proposal in paragraph number five of the written proposal that's attached to the resolution, we'd like to insert a revised boundary description. Not everybody is has received the new boundary description is there I have two. since this is a relatively old um, document a re revised one has been given to us we also um, want to amend the document as follows on the actual resolution if everybody has a resolution we'd like to delete the second whereas completely and insert a new whereas to read Whereas the city of Sheboygan has incurred some ER TID eligible project costs in that line and substitute the revised uh, boundary descriptions again in that on number three, substitute the revised boundary descriptions as the same that we're just hand out for the resolution also. So I would move that those amendments be accepted and adopted. Move and second the amendments be accepted and adopted. Okay, when Pat praise, catches up praise, here. Praise do the second? No, Val. Oh. If anybody has any questions, Steve will answer them. Steve, I do have a question of you. Uh, that's this all been discussed with uh, Paulette and Tom and everything's agreeable? Or? Uh, not the specific description, but what the, I just passed out was the revised boundary description it conforms with the drawing that's in the written proposal uh, the legal description that's currently in the resolution uh, just described the Northgate shopping mall tax parcel this includes all the tax parcels that are in the uh, in the district which is the uh, the Northgate Shopping Center, and then it goes north uh, across Grand Avenue and Mayflower Avenue and Columbus Avenue, and goes all the way up to Pershing. Uh, and the boundary map is shown in your packet. It's the same boundary that's not changed. Uh, the written proposal that you had in front of you basically said the same thing, except I felt that it was a little ambiguous where it said all public street right of ways adjoining or contiguous with the tax parcels are included within the proposed district. That could have been construed to mean uh, 15th Street around the Northgate parcel perhaps and 13th Street on the other side of the street. Wanted to make it clear that wasn't included. So this description uh, refers to all the tax parcels identified in the map and identified in the exhibit that's attached to the written proposal together with the streets that are crossed and the east-west alleys in the two blocks that are crossed. So that's all that does. All the reports. Excuse me, all the reports. Uh, thank you, Honor. I believe there is an error on page three, uh, item B, the last paragraph. It says, in addition, at LLC anticipates an additional $1 million in the brackets, $1.2 million. I believe the $1 million written probably should be $1,200,000 also. Uh, Mr. Tom? Uh, I don't have it before me, but Steve's reading it. Oh, I see. Uh, down in B on uh, yeah, page the, 3. The last paragraph in B. Um,
guess I'm not positive uh, all of them in ports, whether it's... I believe the schedule in back shows the anticipated additional 1.2 million of other development besides. So I believe the 1.2 million is... On the attachments? Right. Okay. In that case, then, the text should be 1,200,000 to conform with what's in the parenthesis there. Okay, we'll be voting on 744 first, the resolution. There's no other discussion. Excuse me, 2639. Okay. We need to vote on the amendment first. Okay. We have a motion. Amendment. amendment. Okay, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Aye, Your Honor, I would move that we approve the uh, resolution as amended. So moved and seconded that we pass the resolution as amended. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Stephen Aye. Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Longman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Fallon? Aye. Deeber? Eber, Aye. Doyle, Aye. 15 hours. Motion carried. Now we'll take the rest of them, 950, 44, okay. Okay. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that the uh, resolution, document number 744, Correct. resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second resolution 744 be put upon this passage under discussion. Your Honor, I, uh, another uh, note I've been given here tonight um, to, I would have, like to amend this to add um, that the approved borrowing resolution be contingent upon approval of the ER TID by a joint review board. Okay. Do I hear a second on that? Yes. Move a second for the amendment. Would you state that again, please? Approval, approval of approval, approve the borrowing resolution contingent upon approval of the e ER TID by the uh, Joint Review Board. And again, Steve will explain. My exp way of explanation on this document and the next document dealing with the entering into contract to start the demolition. Um, the TIF district can't be created and we don't want to start uh, expending big dollars until the uh, joint review board, similar to a regular TIF, reviews the, uh, the TIF and approves it. Uh, it's anticipated that will occur within about two weeks. There's a kind of a short window that the statute provides. Uh, rather than have to come back to council after the Joint Review Board acts to then act on these documents. We felt it would speed things up a little bit, uh, save a meeting by uh, approving them tonight, contingent upon approval by the Joint Review Board. I believe Paulette has a meeting set up for that already. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion before us on amendment. Oh, excuse me. I'll, okay. All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Okay. Move to second that the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Quartz? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Wenninger, aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eber, aye. 15 eyes. Motion carried. Well, that's all that's left is 821, 56, and 58, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. 821, 956, and 958. Alderman Van Akron. That's. 
that's in uh, Matters Laid Over. On 821, I would move, uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. And Steve, do we want that same language in 821? Yes. And I, so I guess I need a second for that first, then we'll amend that. I move in second for amendment under discussion. No, okay. right. just for passage. For passage? Does he need the, is what he's asking. Terry wants to know if we need that amendment in here. Yeah, yeah. I think it should on be subject to approval on, by the Joint Review Board. And on 958 also? Yes. Can we take them both at once? Sure. Then I would move that 958 also be. Um, 958, you're going to need a suspension. Okay, then we won't take them both at once. Back to 821. I know what the wording is. It'll the wording's going to be the same being contingent upon the Joint Review Board approval. There's a motion to set to amend that. Okay. Second. It's been moved and second for amendment under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, Alderman Van Acker. 958. We, uh, no, 821, you have to vote oh, on I'm sorry. That. Aye. As amended. 821, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Second. Moved and second that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Dee Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? 15 ayes. Motion carried. Okay. 958. I would move on 958 that the resolution be put upon its passage. Suspend. I First, we need suspension. suspension. I'm sorry. Second. Been moved and seconded for a suspension. Is there any objections for suspension? Hearing none, would you, Terry, continue, please? Um, not hearing any suspension, I would ask for the resolution be put, but we'll have to amend it to add the same wording that the it be contingent upon. A approval of the ER TID by a joint review board. I moved and second to amend it, to amend the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now, Your Honor, I would like to move to that that resolution 958 be put upon its passage as amended. Moved and second that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. Okay. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. D. Van Akron. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Longman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Wenninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. Thank you, Terry. It was great. Okay, Tom. It did good job. Thank you. Yeah, very good. We took care of half the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Did we act on 956? It goes with the 958. We'll place that on file. Okay. It yeah. really doesn't need a motion. All right. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Van Acken, consent agenda. Everything from 91 through 922. Thank you, Your Honor. Back to the beginning of the agenda. Uh, I would move that to accept and adopt all ROs, accept and file, accept and file and adopt all RCs, accept all ROs, and pass all the resolutions. Move to second to accept and adopt all RCs, accept and file all ROs, and pass the resolutions. That's from 9-1 through 9-22. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 
reports. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 923 through 27 to be referred. 928 and 29 will lie over. 930 through 945 to be referred. Nine forty six we're already taken care of. Nine forty seven and forty eight will lie over. Nine forty nine and through nine fifty one to be referred. Along with nine fifty two and nine fifty three to be referred. Eight thirty, matters laid over. Resolution by Alderman Schultz, Berg, T. Van Akron, authorizing entering into agreement for participation in the HCN Provider Network for provision of health care services outside the HCN Wisconsin Network. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Move it in second. The resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Stephen? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 831, a resolution by T. Alderman T. Van Akron, Perez, Schultz, and Doyle transferring funds to purchase for purchase of GIS software and training. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Does he want to take the next one too? You want to take the next one too? And the there? next one is res resolution 832 by Alderman T. Van Akron, Perez, Schultz, Doyle, Stephan, transferring funds for reduction in interest on investment income from contingency. I, that too would be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, Pat? D. Van Akron? T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? 15 ayes. Motion carried. 837, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Vanderwilly, adding a four way stop sign on Maryland Avenue and South 13th Street, Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. May I take the next one also, 848? You bet. On that, I would make a motion that general ordinances be put upon their passage. Second. Moved and second that to general ordinances be put upon his passage. Under discussion, Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to ask to vote on them separately because I'm going to vote no on 837. Okay. The reason I'm going to vote no on that is we're very good at finding permanent solutions for temporary problems. I think once Rockline has their construction done, uh, any problems there are going to be greatly minimized with traffic. I've driven that street a number of times uh, since this document was submitted, and uh, there doesn't seem to be a problem there. And I, I think we need to give Rockline a chance to uh, get their construction done and see what things look like after that. We can always do something at that point in time. Uh, you know, where where we put in. In the last couple of years, we put in so many four-way stops and or stop signs and four-way stops, and and that the streets are to move traffic. Uh, we shouldn't be doing things to slow traffic down, to block traffic. And uh, if it's necessary, I don't have a problem with it, but I just don't see a problem in this area. Uh, particularly, I think it's temporary. Anything that is there, uh, for one thing, going west on on Maryland, coming up that hill, if there's a stop sign there. In the winter time, the streets are icy. You're going to have traffic held up on the hill. Um, it, it's just I don't <coughs> see a need for the stop sign. Thank you. Okay, we'll vote on them separately. We'll, oh, Alderman Warner. No button. Here. No button. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't have a problem with the separate vote on it, Your Honor. But maybe maybe I should explain how we arrived at this. We got a document last June requesting addressing some problems in the area of. Uh, Maryland Avenue and, and South 13th Street. And I did write a little bit here and I'll just share this with you. The situation in the area of South 13th Street and Maryland Avenue has been well documented in the Sheboygan Press over the last few months. The Public Protection and Safety Committee has been working with the residents of this area 
in an attempt to address our concerns. Some of the concerns were the traffic uh, going to Rockline, and they realized that a lot of the problems they were having with parking and stuff had to do with, with the remodeling down there, but they had many more concerns in the neighborhood rather than just the Rockline uh, remodeling and, and construction project that's going on down, on down there right now. So that is just a small part of the problems we've had in that neighborhood. At the last public protection and safety meeting, people from the neighborhood and officials from Rockline were present to address the many concerns and issues that have arisen due in part to the Rockline expansion. The Sheboygan Police Officer Barrington, Barrington excuse me, has taken charge of the area in a community policing effort to help solve these problems, the problems with Rockline, the problems with gangs and graffiti, and the damage to the homes and the parks and the sidewalks and public works has been involved in trying to remark the crosswalks to make it safer for the kids to cross the streets in this area. The area around South 13th, 14th, and Maryland Avenue involves the second and third aldermanic districts served by Alderman Don Van Akron, Alderman Perez, Alderman Doyle, and Alderman Bauman. And I'm sure these older persons want the residents of their districts to have a safer neighborhood and a safer intersection for their children to cross the street. Sheridan Park and Sheridan School are a draw to the children of this area. And they deserve to have a safe crossing area. Sheridan Park will be getting new playground equipment and that will most likely add to its use. Making this a four-way stop will have little impact on the majority of city residents, but will help the people that live in this neighborhood. This is an ongoing project and your Public Protection and Safety Committee will no doubt be dealing with this until we have done all we can to address the concerns of those that live here. This is one facet of what we're dealing with. By early September, Rockline's new parking lot will be done, and that will relieve some of the pressure. But the need for a four-way stop will still be in the best interests of this neighborhood. <clears throat> the Public Protection Safety Committee supports addressing the needs of this neighborhood, and I hope all the members of this council do likewise. Thank you. Okay, if we have another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? This is for 837. Yeah. T. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Wenninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. D. Van Akron. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 848. Any. No more discussion on 848. Okay. 848, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangeman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Wenninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, 16 eyes. Okay. 15 eyes, right? 15. Did I say that? 16. I said 16. <gasps> I wrote 16. Motion carried. Okay. Nine, other, other matters, 954 will go to City Plan Commission. 955 to Finance. 959, a resolution by Alderman Warner, Berg, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, and Perez, authorizing solicitation for proposals for providing joint ambulance service. Alderman Warner. I uh, thank your honor. Uh, I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this resolution is extremely important to the very health and safety of our community. If our current service contract with Orange Cross should cease to exist, we will need to have alternative sources available to fill the void. Sources that provide ambulance services at reasonable rates to the city as well as to the county. There are interested parties out there that would like to provide the services we are looking for, and this is the only way we can be certain that we are getting the best care possible. The city and the county will both benefit from the analysis of any proposals, and our citizens will be served well by our diligence. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. How does this uh, fit in with having this study done comparing Orange Cross and the fire department proposals uh, is this just complicating things and what does it do to the timeline 
as far as the contract ending December, at the end of this year. Uh, we're certainly not going to have a response and a decision made uh, on anything on this by the end of the year. Alderman Warner. I would say, Your Honor, that we know we have a problem with timing on that, but that does not uh, stop us from going out and seeing if anyone else is interested. Uh, we're not, we have not accepted the current proposals that have been offered to us by outside providers uh, or, or one outside provider, and uh, this just allows other people to enter the mix and see if they have something they can come up with that would be more in line with what the city is looking for and perhaps what the county is looking for also. So we may end up with nothing out of this. Uh, who knows? Maybe no one will respond. But it's uh, something I think we have to do, see if there's any other interest out there. Thank you. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to speak to 959 and 966 at the same time. Uh, I commend the fire department and the firefighters union for their proposals to operate the ambulance service for the city of Chiswagon. Competition is good and can lead to better service and lower cost. I thank Council President Van Akron for the two committee of the whole presentations. They were interesting and informative. However, personally, I've heard enough already. I think the Common Council has heard enough already on this matter. We don't really need more information to make a decision. We don't need new proposals for a joint ambulance service and we don't need an independent study. I've been on the Common Council for three years and I've received a lot of feedback on this issue. Every telephone call, every email message, every face-to-face -face conversation, and every letter I have received from the public supports Orange Cross. The only exception was in today's council agenda, but I've been told that that was by a firefighter and really isn't an impartial observer. Uh, if the residents of the city of Sheboygan overwhelmingly support Orange Cross, why are these hearings going on and on and on to the point where we may have to go past the contract time. Who is it that supports the fire department proposal? Obviously, there are key aldermen, there are key city officials, and some members of the fire department. That appears to be all. It appears as if people are prolonging this uh, whole thing in, in the hopes of uh, <coughs> finding some justification for giving the contract to the uh, fire department proposal, in, even in the face of massive public opposition from Sheboygan. And I find this situation frustrating. The Common Council faces problems everywhere I look. We face the loss of state funding. We face spiraling employee health costs. Every time we have a big rainstorm, there's serious flooding. Serious crime is obviously on the increase in the city. Are we addressing these problems? No, not really. We're going to tinker around with the ambulance service, even though the community is satisfied with it, until we turn it into a problem, too. I suggest it's time to move on. We need to respond to the will of the committee and renew the contract with Orange Cross. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Doyle. Alderman Stephan. Well, I guess my first question to Alderman Doyle would be, what committee exactly is telling us that we should give the contract to Orange Cross. I mean, you said we should respond to the will of the committee. I don't know what committee has spoken on that issue yet. So that would be my first question. I think I do agree with Alderman Doyle that I think we've, I've heard, you know, quite a bit. I think most of the aldermen have, and even the people in the community go one way or the other. I have heard people on both sides. I think the one reason I could see doing a study of some sort is because there are people out there who just refuse to believe you can make, the government can make money on anything. It's a legitimate question, you know. How can we possibly make money on this if Orange Cross can't? You know, on one side you have people who say, you know, majority of the cities in Wisconsin and the United States are doing it. The other hand says, well, if private can't do it, how can the public do it? I think that's the, that's the one question that the people need to see answered. You know, as far as Alderman Doyle's comments, you know, yeah, I read the letters to the editor, and you know, if you looked at them, you could cut them out, you could put the 200 up there, and you know, 18 of them are the same people, 18 of them are the same person again, it's over and over and over, it's the same people. And like the union chief said before, I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but the fire department, I think, you know, I'm not gonna put words in anybody's mouth, but I think they've been very good about not 
you know, they could have fired people at every meeting telling us this. They could have fire department people at every letter to the editor. You know, they can write letters too. They can email. They've all got email. But they haven't done that. They've taken the high road. But unfortunately, the citizens aren't hearing it. They didn't get to see the meeting through no fault of anybody's because nobody thought of it till afterwards. But we're the ones who are entrusted with that decision. And I think, you know, if some aldermen aren't sure yet, can, you know, because that's a tough question. Can the city make money on something? And you've, you've listed this litany of things that we've got problems with, but here's a solution maybe. What if we can make money on it? I don't know if we can either, but I think it's worth finding out if an independent third party says we can make money on it, who am I to say we can't? And I guess I'm not going to look at it with, you know, blinders on it saying, nope, the government can't make money on anything, never have, never will. That's idiot, idiot you know, it's, it, we've got to look at it at least and be willing to take new ideas and new avenues. That's what shared services is all about. We've got to look at new ideas, think outside the box. Maybe this didn't work in the past, but it might work this time. And that's why I would certainly support somebody independently studying this. Thank you. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Th this document says proposals for providing joint ambulance right. service. Now, I assume joint is city county. Under the current contract, the county law committee manages the contract. Yes. Um, shouldn't they be, should they not be the ones uh, requesting proposals for a joint uh, ambulance service rather than the city? I can see, uh, I, I could understand this if we were requesting RFPs on providing ambulance service to the city of Sheboygan, but when it comes to a joint ambulance service, it would appear to me that the county is the one that should be requesting this. The city attorney is. Uh, Alderman Schultz, the document, uh, I, I think, is talking about joint in a different sense. It's saying providing joint fire department, private party, paramedic level services for the city. So it's not city county, this proposal. It's, it's uh, proposals for a joint ambulance service between fire department and a private ambulance company. I guess I would suggest then that it be amended to define that because it's, I think it's confusing okay. as it is. Thank you. In, in here result, it doesn't. In the resolve paragraph. Okay. But on the document itself. On a document, Alderman Schultz? All right. Yep, in the resolve I see that. paragraph. Okay. I see that. Thank you. Alderman Van Acker. Your, Your Honor, I think Alderman Schultz is right. Everybody keeps forgetting this is a joint proposal between us and the county right. and the provider. And uh, we've got meetings set up in the next couple days with the county to do just that, to go over the proposal and come back with a joint. We're trying to make a joint proposal uh, out of this, whether it be with no matter which provider or any provider we go with, we're trying to make it a joint proposal with the county and the city again. Um, so a lot of these things we do have to discuss with the county um, and come together as a, as a um, coalition on what both we and the county. And, and at this time, uh, I, in our last discussions, the county's not ready yet either to go ahead and sign uh, the current contract under its form. Uh, the coalition is not. The city and the county are, have some things that want to be changed. It may be wording. It may be... Um, some some items in there that are concerns of both the county and the city. Uh, and that's why we're looking to go ahead. Uh, and as Alderman Stephan said, the, the study that's talking about in the other document, which I don't know what number it is, it would be looking at both proposals. And again, going back to the joint coalition, both being the county and the city, making the decision, not just the city, not just the county, it would be a coalition that we're trying to keep together in order to get this contract done. And the county has endorsed the idea of going out for um, the, the uh, study. Orange Cross has endorsed the idea of going out for the study. The chambers endorsed every, every All the people involved say the best thing to do is to step back take the politics out of it, take the personalities out of it, and let's look, crunch the real numbers and see what it really looks like. And that's what I think we're asking you to do by doing the study is have the county and the city look at the proposals uh, without 
doing the uh, and taking the politics out of it and having an independent person say yes this can work or that can't work or this would be the to your best advantage versus, versus that to be your best advantage we're just asking just like we would any other consultant to give that our give us all the information we can I think this is an important <coughs> issue we're going to be in a contract whether it be five years seven years for the next ten years with no matter who we sign it with we're going to be in a contract for that. I think it, to take a few extra weeks to make sure we do it right, there's nothing wrong with that. Your Honor, I don't think you should comment, sorry, addressing this document that we're looking at now. We're no. Sorry, addressing another document. Coming up. And we'll get to that. But Alderman Doyle was addressing the two. So I was answering his questions, I guess. If there's no other discussion, uh, we don't need a roll, do we? No. Alderman Warner. I thought your light was going to be for Thank you, Your Honor. Did we want uh, want to amend this document? I guess would be my first question to include the county on this one as well for the RFP. So then it would read, and the intent of, of this audit strategic fiscal plan was that there be possible providers out there that would be interested in a shared city service with the fire department, similar to the joint proposal that the fire department staff presented to strategic fiscal plan. And along with that, that provider would also um, provide service for the county. So that was the intent of this originally. And so that, that I would ask to amend the document to read uh, as it is, except for at the end, paramedic level <coughs> ambulance services for the city of Sheboygan and the county of Sheboygan. Moving to the second for the amendment under discussion. Move the second. Oh, Terry, Alderman Van Erken. Alderman Ports. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, now I guess it brings up the issue, can we put in the county? We, we don't represent the county. I, I guess I didn't have a problem with the document to start with, but now I'm starting to wonder, um, how can we solicit proposals for the county? We are setting meetings up with them as we speak. I should say Mary said I'm setting a meeting up with them, with the county, to get together, to put our proposal together. And I think this is what we're doing, uh, sitting down discussing it with them. Okay, you don't think we're stepping on their toes? Okay, thank you. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. I would not support that amendment. I don't think we can um, assume the county would want to be a part of it. And I think a uh, RFP to uh, include the county is going to look considerably different than an RFP that's only going to involve the fire department, our city fire department in our city. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure we want to confuse things any more than what they already are by uh, including the county in, in this RFP because it's going to be too, there's going to be too great a difference between an RFP that's going to address the county and one that would just be the city. Alderman Van Eckman. Your Honor, I agree with Alderman Schultz. <laughs> um, we are going to be meeting. I would ask that we just hold this. Okay. I, would, I would move that we will hold this. Second. Don't we meet with the county? We're going to be meeting with the county. We can come back with a, a document that, that addresses both of our needs rather than something that might be not what they want to do or we want to do. Um, we, we will be meeting with them in the next few Couple days. days. Um, we can hold this and, and um, see what, what we come out of that document. And, and I'd like to continue to see it be a joint effort and not one way or the other. Do you have a specific date to hold? Or just the next meeting? Or? Just the next, next meeting. We can have a special council meeting if something comes off quicker. But, you know, well, thank you. Currently, currently we would uh, just hold it for the next meeting. On the hold part, Alderman Warner? I think you're on it. I'll support holding the document. As soon as we change it. So okay. something we didn't want and back to something we didn't want now back to something we don't even know what we want but that's okay we'll hold it it does make more <laughs> sense thank you we have motion before us to hold the document under discussion hearing none all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carried okay 960 an rc by building use committee submitting it's close to that it's I know, but we have to add to it also to study for the county site for the for the Sixth Street site. I think it's on there. Add the document. 
that'll go along with the committee rule. Alderman Warner, I need you to amend that. John, on that, I would uh, make a motion to amend RC number, you know, we don't have an RC number, but document number 960, 960 to include uh, a possible uh, site analysis provided to the committee of the whole regarding the 6th and 6th Street uh, site, which would be by the Courthouse Law Enforcement Center. Moved and seconded for the amendment under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, that'll go to committee at whole as amended. All right, uh, if I could, Your Honor, I'll try to be quick. Sure. I'd just like to state that uh, this is a culmination of almost an entire year of work by Steuben Rock Architects and Kimmy Associates. And throughout this time, these firms interviewed many city employees from the police department and the other departments in City Hall, as well as those that should be in City Hall, like the city attorney. We are uh, all quite aware of the need for a new police department and the cons consolidation of our other city departments into a functional facility. This site analysis and needs assessment is a roadmap to get these two projects done. Your building use committee, along with all of those involved with this project, are honored and excited about bringing this report to the Common Council, as well as to the people of the City of Sheboygan. It is our recommendation and request that this document be referred to the Committee of the Whole, which is so being done. And I've talked to Alderman Terry Van Akron and asked him to schedule a meeting of the Committee of the Whole for Tuesday, August 13th, 2002 at 6.30 p.m. And Alderman Van Akron has agreed to do so as Chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Right. At this time, Steuben Rock Architects and Kimmy Associates will make a presentation to the Council and answer any questions you may have. Your Building Use Committee felt it was important that you get the study ahead of time so you could become familiar with its details. We would also ask that the presentation, if possible, be televised so our citizens can see for themselves the quality and value of the work that has been done thus far. On behalf of the Building Use Committee, Alderman Danberg, Alderman Wangaman, the staff from the Police Department and other departments of City Hall, and myself, I thank you. Thank you, Alderman Horner. Okay, 961 will go to finance. Other matters? Steve? Oh, you can, they're on the agenda. They're on the agenda. That one I didn't get. Sure. Here, they're on the agenda. Okay, 962 will go to Public Works. 963 will go to Public Protection and Safety. 964 will go to Public Works. 965 will go to Library Board. 966 and 967, we have to go on 967 first. We need suspension. Alderman T. Van Ackman. Your Honor, I would move to suspend the rules. Move to the second for suspension. Is there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and seconded, a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? No, no. Oh, I need a roll, excuse me. Wangaman? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? No. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. No. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Quartz? No. Schultz? No. Stephan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. Chief Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Is that the 11 or 12? We need 11. We only have 15 now. We still need 16. We just need, uh, need two thirds vote on that, and 11 is two thirds. So it's passed? Yeah. Motion carried. Okay, now the 966. Alderman Warner, or T. Van Akron, whichever one. Alderman Warner, I guess, is under you. Thank you, Your Honor. Make a motion and resolution. Well, we need suspension on. also. Suspension. I move for suspension. Objections to suspension? Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, 
I, didn't, I don't know what to do with this now, being that we held the other document on the um, joint uh, service, uh, ambulance service, going out for RFP. Uh, if we do that, this study is going to be worthless. Uh, if we go out for RFPs, we're going to have this study done. It's going to compare the uh, proposals that we've received from the fire department and from Orange Cross. And it's going to tell us which one is uh, the better proposal for the city and, and our residents. Uh, but then we're going to have these RFPs also. So we're going to have the study done and a response on that. We're going to have these RFPs. We're going to have proposals. Uh, I, you know, I, it, to me, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, we, we either uh, have the study done and compare Orange Cross and the fire department and make our decision on those two, or we decide to leave it, throw it wide open, go out for RFPs, and then make a decision based on everything, the Orange Cross, the fire department, and whatever response we get on these RFPs. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense. I, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense to go out for the study at this time. Alderman Stephan. Yes, um, I guess I agree with Val to a point that, but I guess my concept, and I, it doesn't say in the resolution, but that's why I want to make this clear. I think if we go to the study, it should just be that one question. Do we think that A, the fire department proposal can generate money and provide the service, or the joint proposal could do it? We know Orange Cross can do it. I mean, we don't need to study that. We know that. And we don't, I don't think we need to put them all together. I mean, I think we have enough information to, to gauge those differences. I think the question we, that's hard for us to know is, can a fire department legitimately produce revenue for the city? And you know, when people tell us yes, some say no, some say can't happen. I think we should limit the scope of the study to that question. Excuse you know? me, Bill. Pat just reminded me, we are supposed to be talking about suspension. I said, if was there any objection to sp suspension when you, when you stood up for it? A reason for, you know, I, I, if I'm going to vote against it, then I should vote against, if I'm going to vote against the document, I should vote against suspension. Right. Um, and I guess with that, I, that's what I will do, <laughs> vote against suspension. So then what the bill would say, would you buy me with most force? suspension. Exactly. Okay. As long as it's for suspension. As long as it's for suspension, guys. That's what we're, we're I'll talking. I'll hold my comments until we get to the All right. If there's no objection to suspension. He did there, object. There is a, oh, we well, did? a roll call. Okay. I need a roll call then. This will be just a roll call to suspend. Warner? I believe Ingrid wanted to speak. On suspension? On suspension, Ingrid? Okay. I'm sorry. Sure. Again, what, when we're going to vote no, we're voting against suspension? If you vote no, it's against the suspension. Warner? Oh, hang on. Warner, oh. if you, hang on a minute. Warner? Suspension? I'm, wait, this is speaking in that vein, yes. Uh, it does say in the first sentence, a resolution authorizing the independent study of ambulance service proposals. That doesn't only include the ones we have. That can include any that we have coming, and we can execute this when we deem necessary. We can wait till we get all the proposals uh, and change the RFP any, any way we want at that time so, uh, and change what the standards for the study are. So I just want to make that clear. This does not say just this proposal or that proposal. It says a proposal. Terry's lights blink and Val's lights on. Is this for suspension or what do we, can we vote on the suspension? All right. I, I guess just in response to Alderman Warner, uh, I would suspect that if we're going to open the study up to cover all of the RFPs also, I would suspect that the $15,000, uh, which, which it states not to exceed $15,000, I would think the $15,000 is not going to be enough because when our purchasing agent, Kim Verhulst, went out uh, to get an estimated cost on this, it was based on comparing the two existing proposals, Orange Cross and the Fire Department. I would suspect it's going to be considerably different if we're going to have other RFPs in there with that and, and expect to put them in with the study also. Okay. Alderman, one here. Thank you, Your Honor. Why did we wait it so long? I mean, we, we, we dragging this out. My, my constituents call me almost every night. They made up their mind. I think we're going to vote between two. 
in the orange grass or in the fire department? Why do we need now more proposals? Could you please explain this to me? It's not suspension. Okay. It's not, we'll, we can do that after. Let's stick with the suspension right now. All right. Pat, would you take the role on the suspension? Warner? Weninger? No. Bauman? D. Berg? E. Berg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? No. Stefan? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? No. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Okay. Okay. Now, suspension required a three-quarter vote. So that lost. And so that didn't, lost. didn't get suspension. Order. Order. We only have 15 all there right now. The, uh, it's three-quarters of the members elect of the council. We don't have an elected member, right? Oh, uh, he resigned as of today, so th two, th three-quarters of 15 would still be... <laughs> We don't have an alderman in the eleven. We, right. We're short one representative, so three quarters of the elected is now eleven. There's fifteen. Is that eleven or twelve? Let's figure that out. Well, I, I guess I would take the position that the members elect is it's the full, can, full body of aldermen. It's sixteen aldermen, not fifteen. It's still Based on what would you take that position? It's a there's. It's a <laughs> Does it still become three quarters with 11? Yeah, you need 11 and a quarter with 15, so you still don't get 12. That's, that's the easy answer. <laughs> okay, so that's suspension. It can lie over or go to a committee? It can lie over or go to a committee. Alderman Ports. Thank you, Honor. I, I didn't count the votes this time, but I thought the vote before when I voted no was 11 4. This time I voted yes. Did somebody else switch a vote? Did I yeah. the, the, Wangaman. The, the Wangaman. Right. Switch his vote. And the prior vote was only required a two thirds vote for okay. amending the, the budget. Okay. Thanks. Your Honor, since we held the last document, and again, we're going to be meeting with the county, we can right. try to straighten all this out with this. You know, some of the reason. I would move that we hold this document then till the next meeting. Do you have a second? I hope so. Let's so we'll move to a second to hold the document till the next meeting. Under discussion. Your Honor, some of the reasons why some of this is happening tonight is we've been getting new proposals in almost daily, uh, even at the strategic planning. We were given one just minutes before the meeting so things aren't the same as it's noticed uh, people aren't aware of what the contracts really are even that were given to us two months ago aren't the contracts we're looking at right now I don't know how many of you know that the current contract proposed would not put an ambulance on the north side and south side of town like your current ambulance uh, proposal does now that that has been changed uh, there's a lot of things that have been changed in here that we're trying to work the wording out and that's why it seems like it's confusing but we're trying to get through these and trying to do it in a time frame because the end of the year is coming up and the contracts end. This always happens in contract negotiations. Negotiations are just that. It's negotiations to, for contracts and um, so if it f seems that it's confusing or we're stretching it out it's on both sides of, of the fact that we're getting new proposals from the county, we're getting new proposals from Orange Cross, and like right. I said, almost on a weekly basis. So that's some of the reason why it's taking so long. Okay, Alderman Warner. I thank your Honor. Yeah. And, and also in, in answer to uh, Ingrid's question as to why, why there are more proposals out there, part of that reason is, is in the negotiations that have taken place with our current provider, they have not been forthcoming uh, in, in some of the issues that the city feels is very important to it. And had they been, perhaps we would be done with this already. We would, we would like to have worked on this a long time ago. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. In our strategic fiscal and planning committee meeting last week, uh, Thursday, I suggested a six-month extension of the contract to allow time to get all this stuff done. And it was a flat-out no. So how do you deal with that? Why wouldn't you extend the contract for six months? If you're having a problem retaining people now, 
six more months isn't going to make it any harder and your odds may be good that, that it would stick around for a while yet. So uh, negotiating good faith, one of the reasons we're looking for other proposals is to see if there's a better way to do it. Orange Cross has done a pretty good job. Everyone agrees with that. This isn't about Orange Cross. This is about the city. Orange Cross provides the service to the city and to the county. The city doesn't provide the service to Orange Cross or any other person. We're the ones who have to write the contract that protects the people in the city of Sheboygan. And the people in the county, the county board supervisors, have to write the contract that protects the people in the county. It isn't about Orange Cross. It's about what we're going to do that's right for our people right here. Thanks. Yeah, I'm going to get a Steve. chance. Uh, just, just to comment on this, this document, uh, this came into the clerk's office uh, pretty late in the day today and really didn't have much information to put together the document. I guess if it's going to be held, I think the alderman should uh, look closely at, at defining some of these issues in here, uh, uh, either defining who's going to decide which consultant to hire or coming up in the document with the consultant you're going to hire and what exactly you're going to study should be in this document to uh, to avoid confusion later on. Okay. okay, remember we still have a motion before us, so I hope we're speaking on the same thing here. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I support the motion to hold the document. My reason for speaking against uh, uh, approving it at this point in time uh, is not to is is not that I don't believe we need the study. I do believe we need the study. I believe we need it, uh, dearly need it. Uh, but as it was proposed, it was just to uh, compare Orange Cross and the fire department. Now we are expanding that. And um, that kind of relates to some of this other discussion that, that's come up um, about the ambulance. I would hope that we're not going on a comment on the council floor here, throw out comments without the a chance to um, rebut the comments. Uh, I would remind Alderman uh, Warner when he talks about uh, city and county, we are part of the county also. So when the county approves a contract, we are part of the county. We're 42% or possibly 45%. So the county has to look out for the city also. Um, as far as Alderman uh, Van Akron's comments about Orange Cross not having an ambulance housed on the north and the south side, uh, they need some flexibility, and, and they explained the need for that flexibility. They're still going to uh, cover the north and the south and the central city the same as they did before. Uh, it just might be in a different manner. They feel they need to move their ambulances around, uh, but their goal is still to provide excellent ambulance service, and they're going to do it in the best way that they can. Um, as far as the six-month extension, sure, Orange Cross said no, they're not going to sign a six-month extension, and you, you can't fault them for that. Uh, we knew this contract was ending the end of this year. Uh, the city possibly should have, we should have started some action much sooner. Uh, here we are coming to the end of the year, and we think, well, we'll just renew the contract for an additional six months. Well, I'm sorry, the, the, con the other half of the contract uh, says, no, we're not going to. They're still going to provide ambulance service. They're not going to uh, disconnect the phone at the end of the year if they don't have a contract. They're going to continue to provide service, the same service they're providing under the contract. They're just not going to have a contract uh, with the city until we uh, either sign a new one or, or do something else with the ambulance service. So you can't fault, fault Orange Cross for saying that they don't want to sign an extension on the contract. Thank you. Yes, that's the why I want to hold. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All the way I don't know if I'm in order or not. I've lost track. I don't either time. anymore, but <laughs> go ahead. I just forward. do want to say that I, I sort of see this whole thing about RFPs as maybe I'm cynical as pie in the sky because I remember the years when Curtis uh, came to town and they were pretty much uh, shot out by the local hospitals and so on. And uh, is, are these people that are going out looking for these RFPs from these other companies, have, have they got guarantees from the hospital that there's going to be just super cooperation and that it won't be just uh, Curtis all over again? And then to spend $15,000 on, on this quote independent study, it's just the start of the money that's going to go out on this issue. Thank you. 
Alderman the parts. Thank you, Your Honor. Given what the city attorney just said, that we should be reviewing this document and making way I took it some changes to bring other things in. Uh, should we really be filing this and having to bring in a new document to the next meeting? He's, I mean, he stated that this was just brought in at the last minute, and he said that we need to incorporate more items into it. And I guess if that's the case, why we are holding this one, why don't we just file this one and they can bring in a new document for the next meeting with the proper things that should, the city attorney thinks should be in there? Would we? Well, I'll be asked for suspension again. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering why we wouldn't file this. Thing. That's fine. Okay, if there's no other discussion, we have a motion before us. Before you guys vote on it, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Pat, thank you to Steve, and thank you to Rich, their departments, for putting these documents together in the last, you're right, half an hour of today, and it was rush, rush, rush. We came out of committee, we never got it down to Pat's office. We never got over to Steve with these documents or to Rich's office, so uh, we do have to do a better job of getting documents in in a timely fashion. But I thank you again. I think your girls put in half an hour extra tonight. Uh, 40 minutes each times four girls, and I have no overtime to pay them, so <laughs> they're going to get some time off of work this week. So, I happen to be out of the office, so they handle it without me, and I'm very proud of them. It wasn't just the two documents. It was many, the whole agenda, everything. It's very good. So if we can be more sensitive and get the documents in a little a little sooner. Or if you have a problem, call me a little sooner so I can get them down to Pat. So. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion before us. All in favor of the motion to hold? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. It's 968 will go into building use. That, one, that one's not on the agenda, so that should really be read. <laughs> That's not on the amended agenda. Yeah, no. Steve? Nine sixty eight is communication from Amy Barr relative to the possible location of a new police station. And that will go to building use committee. <laughs> Move to the second. <laughs> 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 to Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, Motion carries. Yeah,